What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about adding this very beneficial insect into our garden to combat a very pesky pest. That pesky pest is the leaf miner. Now, a lot of you have encountered leaf miners and have wrote in asking us to cover leaf miners. And we actually have had a huge problem with leaf miners on our Swiss chard, which I'll show you guys what it looks like and how we're gonna combat them. Leaf miners come in two different forms. There are the spinach leaf miner and there is the vegetable leaf miner. Now, as the name implies, the spinach leaf miner uh, affects crops like spinach, but it also oddly affects things like tomatoes, uh, lettuce, uh, as well as uh, peppers and beans. So you can definitely have the spinach leaf miner affect other crops. However, the most widely, uh, kind of the most widely encountered uh, form of leaf miner is actually the vegetable leaf miner, which you'd think the vegetable leaf miner would affect things like tomatoes and whatnot, but it doesn't. The vegetable leaf miner actually affects soft tissued plants like beans, spinach, beets, Swiss chard, lettuce, and several others, just, you know, just to name a few. But the vegetable leaf miner is very prolific and it actually replicates much faster than its other counterpart, the spinach leaf miner. Now, uh, the spinach leaf miner uh, is, almost looks like a little tiny house fly, whereas the vegetable leaf miner looks kind of like, uh, it's kind of a golden colored little fly. You hardly would see it with the eye because it's so small. But what it does is the adult fly flies around and then it lays an egg on the, uh, on the leaf surface of whatever it wants to colonize. Then the larva actually hatches and burrows into the leaf. And you can see this by the mazes that it forms, the tunnels, the, you know, the tunnels that it mines in your leaf, hence the name leaf miner, that's how it got its name. And these tunnels can be seen zigzagging all throughout your, your leaf. And then what happens is the, the leaf miner, as it actually uh, begins to pupate or mature, it actually will hollow out a big cavity in the leaf. It could be an inch wide, up to two inches wide, this cavity. Some are also smaller as well, um, just depending on how hungry and how, you know, how advantageous the leaf miner is. But the leaf miner will then hollow out a cavity and that's where it will then pupate, break through the leaf, come out, it will mate, and the whole cycle will happen all over again. Now, stopping this is very challenging because leaf miners can't really be controlled with things like BT. They can't be controlled with things like uh, neem oil or pyrethrum or some of your other you know, organic pesticides out there. Um, Diatomaceous earth doesn't work on them either and because that's because they're inside the leaf. It's very challenging to actually combat something that's inside of a leaf. And so what we're going to do is combat them with this. This is known as the leaf miner parasite. Now these parasites are actually parasitic wasps. They're non-stinging, they're very small. I'll bring you guys in close to check them out. And we actually got them from Arbico Organics. Now these were not cheap. These right here, this is 250 uh, adult parasites. And uh, this came, I believe, uh, well, we, we had it overnight shipped as well, but it came out to about, I think, $80 for these, uh, for these parasitic wasps. However, the nice thing is that uh, this, these 250 parasitic wasps are good for about one acre. That's right, one acre. So they are very effective at what they do. They love seeking out their primary food source, which is leaf miners. And so for us, you know, we highly value our crops and I want to actually uh, begin to eradicate the leaf miner population in our area because one thing we have noticed is that they have become a problem. One thing that you'll notice as well is that once you have a leaf miner problem, you will notice them year after year after year. And that's because uh, once they find a place that is hospitable for them and good to colonize and has a good food source, they're going to stay, you know, they're gonna stay around and stick around. So it's very important that we kind of limit their numbers, dwindle them down, and then once they get to a, a even balance, there's going to be some equilibrium in our, uh, you know, in our little ecosystem here. And so all we're doing is uh, incorporating these beneficial insects into our garden. So this is what parasitic wasps look like. Now, parasitic wasps are very, very small. You can probably see them there, <laughs> very small. But like I said, there's 250 of these. I'm not sure how they count 250, but there are 250 in here. They came in this little vial here with a air vent over the top. And uh, yeah, they're ready to go. So I'm gonna go show you what the damage looks like from leaf miners first and then 
we'll release these bad boys into the garden. Bad boys and probably some bad girls too. So this, this is leaf miner damage. Now it's been accentuated by the fact that the birds try to come in here and birds will, uh, will eat the leaf miners, but the problem is they also mutilate the leaf and turn it into Swiss cheese. So you can see here these little mazes that are formed here. There's some more over here. There's some more right here. And you'll see, I mean, these, they do a lot of damage. And the newer growth is unaffected until, uh, the, until the leaf miner actually gets a hold of it and starts burrowing in here. And you'll notice it's just all over the place. There's another little cavern right there. The little patches are the cavern. And if I squish it, yep, there's a leaf miner in there. I just felt it. I just popped it. So uh, there are lots of them in here. And you, as you can see, plenty of damage on our Swiss chard. They really like the Swiss chard. For some reason, this is their, like, their favorite crop, but we also do have them on things like our lettuce and our spinach. And we don't get them as much on lettuce and spinach, but we do get them. So I need to control these. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so now it's time to release these into the garden. Now the best way to do this is to simply lift the cap and to uh, and basically just let them go free. Um, it's ideal not to shake them around and to kind of toss them around because they are very small. So it's recommended just to twist the cap and then just simply set them near the plant. So I'm just gonna set them just like that. And they're flying out, I can see them flying out. And uh, we're basically going to just let them go free. And then they're going to instantly start seeking out uh, their, their prey. I just think it's so amazing that such a teeny tiny little insect can have such an impact on the garden. Now the way these actually work is the parasite uh, will fly around and lay an egg on a leaf miner. Now the leaf miner is then its host and it will feed off of the host until it can pupate and become an adult. And so the, the leaf miner parasite will just fly around, find its host, sting it, use it as a food source, basically rendering it dead, and then will hatch, multiply, and then begin to colonize your garden. So it's a very beneficial thing to have in your garden. It's a great way to, uh, to kind of bring back balance with predator and prey and um, just kind of control some of these what I would consider to be very pesky pests because they can do some serious damage on your garden. And like I said, why not, rather than use some harmful pesticides and, and stuff like that, that are available, that are kind of systemic and very, very potent. I don't wanna be ingesting those. Why use those when I can use an insect to actually help me out and to create that balance. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to throw a like up there, make sure to subscribe if you're not yet already, and also make sure to shout out Arbico Organics. This is not a sponsored episode. I went out and bought these myself but it would be really great to have them uh, on board and do a sponsored series. Now, I don't know if they'd be interested in doing this or not, Arbico Organics, if you're watching, I would love to do a sponsored series uh, all about beneficial insects. And I think it'd be very beneficial, <laughs> See what I did there? It'd be very beneficial to talk all about the different good bugs out there that can help your garden. Things like ladybugs and pring mantises and mealy bug destroyers and uh, you know other parasitic wasps. And so I think it'd be awesome, but I just don't have the money to go out and buy all these to do the series. So it'd be a great thing if they would come on board. I'd really appreciate it. But Arbico Organics, here's your free shout out at least. Uh, I appreciate you guys for providing these because I think they're gonna be a really good asset in our garden. So. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. As always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. I'll catch you all later. See ya.